This is a video about Wizz Air, a controversial ultra-low-cost carrier currently disrupting the European and Middle Eastern aviation market. Wizz Air is known for its extremely affordable fares, but how on earth do they manage to offer flights that cost less than a six-pack of rubber screaming chicken? With this video, I set out on a mission to uncover the secrets of the Hungarian low-cost airline. I have already flown five times with Wizz Air. Each time, something went wrong. Each time I swore I'd never fly with Air again, and each time I was still tempted by the incredibly low prices and booked once more. And I did it again. Today's flight leads us from Basel Euro Airport to Bulgaria's capital of Sofia. The first hurdle begins with the online check-in, which is constantly overloaded and unnecessarily complicated. Even if the online check-in fails, and you show proof of the error, you will still be charged 40 euros per person for a printed boarding pass. Wizzair promises a refund, but after two years and multiple attempts to contact them, I can assure you, it's unlikely to happen. Trust me, I've been there. I have the feeling that Wizzair complicates the check-in process so that you pay extra at the airport. And I'm not alone with this theory. After the system declares the visa details for my wife invalid, we are kindly asked to check in at the counter. We do not fall for this trap and I decide to submit incorrect data. After overcoming the first hurdle, we actually receive our boarding passes and make our way to the airport. Let's see if our lucky streak continues. At 6 pm it's still 31 degrees and instead of flying with Wizzair, I would actually prefer to spend some more relaxing me time in tranquil Switzerland. Flying as a Zurich citizen from the airport of the arch enemy Basel is a serious betrayal to my origin. However, to be fair, Euro Airport is not even in Basel, it's in France. As far as I know, the unusual model of how this airport is set up is unique in the world. Basel Airport, sorry, I mean Euro Airport, is located in France, but it's shared between France and Switzerland. The Swiss access road on French soil is plastered with Swiss street signs and advertisement, and the airport has a French and a Swiss entrance. Likewise, the whole departure area is divided into a French and a Swiss port, and you can comfortably cross an international border inside the terminal, which is pretty cool. But now let's go through security, quickly pass a duty-free to a place that is not at all Wizz Air-like. Let me present you the Euro Airport Skyview Lounge. The award-winning 1700 square meter business class lounge, spread over three floors, is one of the best of its kind. Let's dive into the incredible world of this oasis of luxury and unparalleled customer service. After some time of waiting to no avail, we enter the lounge on our own and proceed to the second floor, where we meet a staff member. She doesn't even want to scan our priority pass and tells us that it's enough to scan the pass when we leave the lounge. The friendly employee who has more confidence in me than I do welcomes us and we make ourselves comfortable. Before we are crammed like sardines in the plane of Wizzair, we treat ourselves to a last good time. After a few check and cokes, I remember that I actually still have to record a video and that my mother might be watching right now. So I do the only reasonable thing and step out onto the smoking terrace, which is the absolute highlight of this lounge. Almost bigger than the lounge itself, the open air smoking area extends 180 degrees around the lounge and offers a unique view of the tarmac and the runway. Unfortunately, you are not allowed to take drinks or food outside, so head back to the lounge, which in addition to a small buffet, also features a work area and this over-the-top bridge. A glance at the departure board tells me that our Wizzair flight W64324, to my great surprise, is not late. A look at past flight shows that this is an absolute exception with Wizzair. As Bulgaria is not a Schengen member state, we still have to go through passport control and arrive at the gate on time. At the same time, our plane, a 6-year-old Airbus A321CO with the registration HALXW, arrives at the gate. This leads me to conclude that a timely Wizz Air flight will probably not be possible today. Boarding is slow, and we are to some extent part of the reason for further delays. Pajali's visa is declared invalid and a supervisor has to be called to determine that the visa in fact is valid for entry to Bulgaria. When we board a plane on foot across the tarmac, it's already pitch dark. Although we are already 45 minutes late at this point, we are in good spirits and board a plane. At first glance, the cabin looks modern and well kept. The crew seems busy and we are happy to have a seat in the third row, which by the way costs twice as much per person as the flight itself. As a low-cost airline, Wizzair of course does not offer a business class and even here in the front, legroom is extremely tight. 
The seats therefore do not recline and you will not find Wi-Fi or an IFE here. On closer inspection I notice some sign of wear and tear and the cleanliness might be better. Considering that the flight costs less than a train ticket in Switzerland, this is acceptable in my opinion. After all, you get what you pay for and in our case it's not that much. Where I do have a problem however is when Wizair uses dishonest methods to avoid costs. An example of this is a Wizair flight from Abu Dhabi to Moscow that I had back in 2022. Wizair completely fucked up my suitcase, I reported to the baggage claim desk as soon as I landed. After a frustrating process involving ignored complaints, delayed emails and a fruitless trip to the airport, they finally responded more than a month later. Their solution? Have my suitcase inspected by an official government authority in Switzerland, an authority that doesn't exist and that they admitted not knowing about. These are precisely the kind of tricks Wizair uses to evade its responsibility and they get away with it. Even when I miss my connection after another Wizair flight, due to a delay of about 3 hours I was promised a refund which after a year still has not arrived. I don't know whether I'm exaggerating things here and whether you simply have to accept such things when you fly for so cheap. I would be interested to know how you see it, so please let me know in the comments. One thing however that has always impressed me positively with Wizair and also stands out on this flight is the cabin crew. They seem to be professional and friendly. With a delay of just under an hour we leave the gate and head for the runway where two rabbits join us. We take off into the darkness and I let the roar of the engines lull me into a state of trance from which I only wake up when my stomach makes its presence felt. Wizz Air offers drinks and meals for a fee on its flights and often offers special deals and packages. I opt for pasta carbonara for 4 euro 50, which obviously is freshly prepared in the aircraft's galley from purely organic ingredients. As I sit far in the front, I notice that the galley is unoccupied for almost the entire flight. When I head to the lavatory, I'm all alone in the front and take some time to evaluate the bathroom. It is in good condition and relatively clean. Back at the seat, the clock strikes 11 pm, or according to local time in Bulgaria, midnight. Not only does this mean that the new day is beginning, but also that they have just become one year older. Come to think of it, I probably should have bought a better flight than Wizz Air for my birthday. Nevertheless, I celebrate with a bottle of water and secretly wish that I could stop time. I would also like to take this moment to thank you. I started this channel less than half a year ago and I cannot believe that my community has already grown to over 700 people. I never expected this and I'm so grateful for you guys watching my videos and I love every one of you. But enough sentimental stuff, I need to fasten my seatbelts as we are about to land in Sofia. Please put your tray up here. The delay has been reduced a bit and soon we spot the first lights of the Bulgarian capital. Bulgaria has been on our bucket list for a long time and I'm feeling extremely excited to finally see this country with my own eyes. The approach into Sofia is a bit turbulent but the crew checks the cabin thoroughly and the lights are turned down. As the doors open, I remember why front seats are so much more expensive with Wizair. Like a bunch of wild buffaloes, the passengers push their way to the passport control, shoving, skipping the queue, bulldozing each other and acting shamelessly. As you can see, my experience with Wizair has its up and downs. Despite the low prices and convenient flight routes, their questionable handling of luggage and customer service complaints leaves a lot to be desired. Nevertheless, I would be lying if I said I would never fly Wizair again. The prices and the large route network always tempt me to choose this carrier. Whether a more expensive alternative like Swiss International Airlines is worth the money, I have tested in this video. Please click here to watch it. Thank you so much for watching and see you next week.